Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for another edition of the show. So uh, we've got a couple more Psalm Select wines and um, I think that's it. I don't think I have any more Psalm Select, at least the ones I do have were the extra bottles uh, that I purchased. So um, let's get into this. I uh, hope you enjoyed the Halloween episode, uh, new background. Um, I really like the background, it actually pops. Um, also, I'm recording this in now full HD instead of 720p. Uh, we're doing 1080. Um, I know for the Halloween episode, it doesn't really look, you can't really tell because of how the lighting is kind of dark and all that. Um, and I did some processing. Hopefully this is gonna look really good. Um, we'll see what happens once I start editing, if it looks any better on, uh, on the computer and on television. Uh, but anyway, um, let's see what else. Oh, and I also noticed when I watched the uh, Halloween episode on my, uh, on the Roku, on just the YouTube app, the sound effects were really quiet. So I know I've had sound effects, I mean, when I did the editing, the sound effects sounded like it was just about the right volume, um, not too loud, so you couldn't hear me. I know I've had some Halloween episodes where um, it was hard to hear what I was saying over the uh, moans and groans and chains and rain and all that stuff. So I don't know. It sounded good in the studio. I mean, it really did. Um, and I guess that's it. Let's get into, oh yeah, we're gonna try this. Let's get into the wine. No, not that. And let's go, let's get going. All right, so um, first up is the 2012 Cru Montplacer Grand Vin de Bordeaux. Let me go a little. Get that a little bit closer to you. Um, this is a uh, Bordeaux wine. Uh, it is 75% Merlot, 20% Cabernet Sauvignon, 5% Cabernet Franc. Uh, paid $20 on uh, Psalm Select. And um, <clears throat> so, who are these guys and why are we uh, as a Bordeaux Superior? So, what does that mean? It just means it has a higher alcohol content. 12.5%, uh, I believe, is the minimum that it has to be if I'm correct. And I'm trying to see where the alcohol is on this. Um, 13 and a half on this one. But if I remember correctly, it has to be at least 12.5% for alcohol for, for Superior. All right, so um, this is owned by um, husband and wife team, Julie Medeville. And uh, I don't know if it's probably Xavier, not Javier, but Xavier Gonet. Um, they both have, uh, wine families. They both come from wine families, so they have a background. Um, let's see, Julie descends from the Chateau Gillette, uh, clan. Um, says famous with Sauternes lovers around the world. And then, uh, Javier, or Xavier, finds his roots among the groves of Champagne's famous Les Mensil, like Les Mesnil. Um, so they, uh, decided to buy this in 2009. They bought this, um, estate, this chateau. It is, um, it is along the border of, um, the village of Margot and, uh, it's composed of two parcels and basically you have, uh, one is, uh, uh, just beneath Chateau de San and the second is, uh, just below Chateau Margot. Now what they mean by just below, I don't know. Um, and then Ian Cobble, who is the, the guy who owns and started and runs uh, Psalm Select, um, he quoted, for its price, this is the single best Bordeaux I have had in years. So no pressure, no pressure for me to like it. No pressure for the wine to show well. So let's see how it is. 
All right on the nose, got some red fruits. Nothing too earthy about it. Got a little bit of, a little bit of earthiness, not too much. Like maybe some, like some stem uh, wood. But brighter red fruits. Let's go on the palate. So far, so good. Hmm. This is really good for 20 bucks. Now, you can, there's a little bit of heat to it. It's only 13 and a half alcohol. But I can kind of feel the heat and when it swallow, I can kind of feel it in my chest. Um, but that's okay. Um, definitely more of the red fruits. You got a little bit of wood to it. Um, trying to come up with, with the right phrase or the right description here um, to get what I'm going for. But um, uh, it's definitely tasty. It's kind of velvety. Not a not a huge presence of um, of oak influence to me. I don't get um, you know there might be some wood tannins to this, but it's not. But it's I'm trying to remember is that I don't really whenever whenever the master psalms describe wood tannin versus grape tannin, I can never remember which one is which. If it's you know on the on the gums or this or that whichever, but right here on the gums, so that might be the wood tannin. Okay. From the oak, um, maybe the grape. I don't know. I'll have to look it up in between shows. But um, <laughs> anyway, really grab. You know, the, it really grabs the right here. You know, on the front of the gums, but nowhere else. Um, but medium bodied. Um, it's very tasty, kind of velvety. I don't get like the uh, the spices that you would expect from from uh, oak treatment. But um, it's very flavorful and tasty. Medium bodied, um, not too terribly in your face, but probably want to have a little bit of food with this um, to help to help counteract the wine. But if you really just want to drink some wine, you could drink this, but you probably need some food. You know, there's a, a little bit of eucalyptus to this. Um, some mintiness eucalyptus um i wouldn't really say like mint and chocolate but maybe maybe some chocolate covered red fruit that's minty i don't know but i don't really get the chocolate but it just kind of reminds me of like a chocolate ch covered cherry but like but also a, a little bit of mint and it's so subtle it's not like it's bursting in my mouth like that um but yeah it's it's tasty Hey, if you want something that's right about 20 bucks, um, good drinking wine, it's fairly easy drinking. Like I said, you could drink this on its own, um, but it'll pair with just about any type of meaty uh, type of food, stuff with red sauces. Um, we had this chicken with like a salsa and cheese, uh, some taco spices. This actually probably would have gone really well with that because the... Um, the, the wine is, even though it's medium body, there's a bit of boldness to it. And the, um, what you want to call it? The food had a bit of boldness to it too. All right, cool. Um, so I think this probably would have gone really well with the dinner tonight instead of the, uh, the soda I had. But since I knew I was recording episodes tonight and I needed to eat dinner first, that's what I did. But I definitely would recommend it. Um, you know, granted... Um, I bought this off Psalm Select. If you can find this retail for around 20 bucks, um, I think it's a really good buy. Sometimes Psalm Select repeats wines. Uh, maybe they, they, they went in and bought a whole bunch, made a big commitment when they didn't sell out. 
they repeat the wine a little bit later because now that I've been with them or been following their stuff for over a year, I tend I sometimes see the same wine pop up every few months. So um, nothing wrong with that. Cool. All right. Well, let's uh, let's move on to the next wine, and I'm gonna get my timer going here. Two, two, two. All right. So wine number two. Now this one. I'm real excited about trying. Um, I don't drink a lot of Greek wines, um, red or white. So um, I'm kind of excited to try this. This is the 2010 Alpha Estate Xenomavro for $22. Um, so Xenomavro, what the, what the heck? So Greek wines, um, you know, in high school I was, <clears throat> you know, my, my junior, senior year of high school, I was in Latin, and one of the things I did was study mythology. And uh, you know, they always talked about drinking wine, and they and they they would um, what you want to call it? They would uh, dilute it with water. And, I, and not that I was a wine drinker back then. I definitely wasn't really drinking alcohol. But um, you know, I always kind of wondered about the uh, about the whole why do we need to dilute the wine with water and I have done a little bit of research on it, and I'm not going to go through all of it, but basically the wines kind of needed it. So, um, and it was considered uncouth to drink the straight wine like that. But, um, so anyway, so let's, let's get into this wine. Xenomavro, um, if you translate it, it can mean acid black or sour black. Um, and it's the principal red grape of the uplands of Nausa in the region of Imathia around... Wow. Amantayo in Macedonia, Greece. So if you know where that is. Um, Amandion is a wine region in northwest Greece in the province of Macedonia. So Macedonia is kind of that top part of Greece. Uh, I mean, Macedonia has been its own country before um, and all that. I, I don't really know all the Greek politics and, and Greek, you know, all the, all the stuff about more modern Greek. But I know Macedonia has been its own country before, and there's been some animosity between that and the southern part of Greece, and you got Athens and all this other stuff. So we won't get into that. Um, this particular, um, and let's put this here now, this particular winery was founded in 1997 uh, by two gentlemen, uh, Marcus Mav Mavridis and uh, Angelos uh, Eotritis. Eritritis, Eritritis, we don't know because I don't speak Greek. Eli, if you're watching, which I know you're not because you're into beer, but if you're watching, you got to help me out with this, brother. I should have you know, uh, asked you to pronounce these things for me. Um, anyway, so uh, these states at a 2,000 foot elevation, um, the vineyards have a northwestern sun exposure. Um, although the climate is cold, rainy, and snowy in the winter, uh, the summers are warm and dry, so the intense winter rains and snow actually work to keep the vines nourished all summer long. So get all the winter rains and the snow, ground collects all the water, don't have to do irrigation. Um, soils are sandy clay, and they try to be as eco-friendly and sustainable as possible. Um, and then um, they, have, they, they use both indigenous and international varietals. Um, trying just to get the highlights here let's see here um they are a gravity a state-of-the-art gravity flow winery um and they are dedicated or their their wine techniques are delicate and fairly hands off uh they de-stem but they don't crush the grapes uh they're cold soaked with skin contact before fermentation on lees for eight months uh then it's aged in french oak barrels and they even tell you medium grain white toast white toast okay uh for one year uh and it sees an additional year in bottle before release um now uh <clears throat> there was something about hedgehog and i don't know if it's on here no wrong bottle something about on here so yeah there's a, hedge, there's a hedgehog on the uh the back of the label and it's also in the front hedgehog hedgehog vineyard um 
And so I'll read it from the back of the label. It's the name of the single vineyard block chosen by Alpha State Growing Team to designate the best expression and typical character of Xenomavro, the noblest red varietal of northern Greece. The vineyard name is Hedgehog because it is an ancient nesting area for the local hedgehog species uh, that we continue to preserve and protect. Um, I think that's about all I really need to say on that. Cool. And then we just kind of, what they talked about stuff we already talked about. Um, let's see, that's about it. So let's check it out. Most likely if you're going to have a Greek red wine, it's going to be this grape. Especially, you know, here in the States. So on the nose, not a whole lot going on there right now. Maybe some just reddish fruits. Maybe, ooh, you know what? Maybe blackish fruit, but not like a, a lot of fruit coming up. And I don't really get, I don't really get much else. I mean, I don't get any, I, I like this last one, I could kind of smell the alcohol. I can't really smell the alcohol in this. Um, there's no floral or wood aromas, no earthiness coming out. Very, it's all very just subtle, very slight for anything that's coming out. And but all I get is mainly fruit. Though in a way, in a way, I kind of smell concrete. Sidewalk. So by, by that, I mean kind of like a clean, a cleanness to it. So it's maybe not the actual smell of concrete or a sidewalk, but maybe just a, an expression of clean, of clean or cleanliness. And some more mintiness. All right, let's taste it. This wine's a little sharper than the than the Bordeaux. Um, Feels a little juicier. Um, again, with the red fruits, um, like a tartness. That's what I'm getting, a tartness out of it. Um, so like maybe like a sour cherry or something like that. Um, I don't consider it as tasty and flavorful as the Bordeaux. This is a little, this is a little bit um, more focused. I don't want to say thin, but kind of a narrow wine. Uh, doesn't coat the mouth. Uh, tannins aren't as big, but they're still a little bit on, on the front of the gums, but nothing like the uh, Bordeaux. Um, I can kind of get a little bit of the heat, a little bit of the alcohol. It's definitely a lighter bodied wine. It's somewhat like Pinot Noir, somewhat like Gamay, um, in that it's not a full-bodied wine. Um, so it's kind of like that. If you like that style of wine, lighter, lighter style of wine, this is a good wine. Um, I didn't say it was twenty-two dollars, right? So this is not an expensive bottle of wine. Um, at least not, at least not outrageously expensive. I mean, this is you know a decent price for a wine. Um, I'm kind of struggling on what I would pair it with, food-wise. Um, high acid foods, I think, because I really think this this kind of needs some high acidic foods. So, things with tomatoes. Um, yeah, I, I could see something with like tomato sauce. Maybe th this might have actually worked well with that with that uh, chicken dish, except that the spices with the chicken dish might have been a little overwhelming. Whereas the Bordeaux was was definitely you know on point with that. Um, but you could have this with lighter fare, but something with high acid to it. You're not going to have this with like pot roast or ribeyes or something like that, you know. But you know, you you could have it with with lighter like like uh, like fowl, like like different types of game, um, duck, that type of stuff. Yeah. All 
Lamb it's from Greece. It would go great with lamb. Absolutely go great with lamb. All right. Um, that is going to do it for this episode. Um, if I had to pick one, I'd, I'd kind of like the Bordeaux a little bit better, but that's because I just happen to like Bordeaux. Um, I don't drink enough Greek wines to really have too much of an opinion. I've had some really good Greek wines, and I've had maybe a couple that weren't that great. I was like, eh, but they've always been interesting. It's always a learning experience for me to, to get that flavor profile. Um, I don't drink enough of it. I don't drink enough of basically Eastern European um, wines to uh, really have an opinion. And we've got some we've got some more Eastern European wine coming a little bit later. Um, so anyway, um, but if you want a, a good light-bodied uh, Greek wine that's 22 bucks, that's not going to break the bank, um, you drink it with um, some lighter fare, some duck, some, some lamb, that type of stuff, veal. Um, maybe you have like a little bit of red sauce to it. Um, maybe you just roast it, um, you know, maybe just, just grilled and maybe some light spices, nothing too heavy. Um, I can see this going pretty well with that. It could also be kind of a, a Thanksgiving substitute. Haven't decided my Thanksgiving wines quite yet, but looking at my wines for review, I stumbled across a couple burgundies that I've had for a while from, um, oh, like at least a couple of years. Um, plus I have a sparkling wine that I've been asked to review. So I, that might be, the, that might be everything. We might do a sparkling wine and, and just do two burgundies and just put it to bed on that. Um, other than that, I'd like to thank everyone for stopping by. I want to, if you click the links above to friend me up, uh, hit the donate button over here to buy me some more wine or some more gas capsules for the Corvin because, um, stupid me when I put in the first capsule, pfft, I somehow messed up and all the gas went away. So I only have one more capsule. I gotta buy some more. Um, I've actually been using my Coravin to like drink wine. So, excuse me, I'm kind of concerned that I might run out of gas. And I'm never out of gas, as you just heard. Um, I might run out of a little gas in a couple episodes from now. Um, but anyway, um, so hit the donate button, send a few ducats, and then um, leave comments below. Um, you can find me everywhere. Leave some comments on iTunes or give me a five-star rating. That would be really helpful. Um, helps to bump it up for all the wine podcasts. And um, that's it. We'll see everyone again next time.